Hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to do a nice batch of Papa Greco's summer sausage. We got a mix for a 10 pound batch, and we're going to do jalapeno cheddar summer sausage in this video. Just finished grinding up some fresh venison, and I'm going to show you guys how to do this with some great tips and tricks, and I'll show you the equipment we're going to use during it. I've also got a new meat mixer to try out. I'll tell you if I like that or not. And this is going to be a fantastic batch of homemade Papa Greco's summer sausage. Hit that subscribe button down there. Check this out. Almost forgot. That's better. So first things first, I've got about eight pounds of meat that I just ground up with 20% beef fat, and I got a two pound package of 10% beef fat, and I want to mix all that together. I've got this new mixer, new to me, and I've been looking at these meat mixers for a while. All these 15 pound mixers are pretty much the same on the inside. And the idea is it really hurts your hands with this cold meat, mixing all these ingredients and stuff together. So this should make it a lot easier. We'll find out if it really is a lot easier here in just a minute. So first, we'll drop in the meat we just ground. So now we just unceremoniously dump in the other package of 10%. You can tell by the color difference between the 10% and the 20%, a little higher fat content. But this should mix together real nice. Those look like it's doing a pretty good job. I'm going to run this both directions. Get everything mixed up good. Definitely could use to be anchored down. Rips my meat lug back out. All right, the jury is in on the meat mixer. No thanks. I can do this faster, better, and a lot easier just by hand. It's a cute little gadget, but you know what? For this size, you got to hang it off of something to spin the handle. And quite honestly, you said you can't anchor it down. It's kind of just a pain in the butt to use. So I'm going to go back to doing this by hand. Now, if any of you guys got a bigger meat mixer that actually works and you want to send me one, I'll be glad to try it out. But these little ones, no, nah, not so much. Our instructions call for on the cure packet for 10 pounds of meat, we want to use 0.4 ounces of the cure. This is just simple number one cure. So we're going to go to 0.4 ounces. Put that in there. Now we're going to put in our Papa Greco's summer sausage seasoning mix. Look at all that mustard seed in there. Mm -mm. I almost forgot, while you're doing this, you want to go ahead and get your casing soaking. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix this meat up, stuff it right into the casings, and then let it cure in the refrigerator at least overnight. You can cure it up to, I don't know, a couple, three days if you want to. Typically overnight seems to work fine. We're going to be cooking this stuff anyway. So you just want to soak your casings in some nice warm water for about 20 minutes. Now the recipe calls for a cup of cold water, but honestly, I'm going to go two because it makes meat a lot easier to work with, especially when it comes time to stuffing. And we're going to be cooking the thing in the smoker anyway, so it will dry back out. When you're making sausage, any sausage, water is typically your friend. About a cup and a half here. That goes for jerky, snack sticks as well. So now we're just going to get in here and mix this up the old-fashioned way. 10-pound batch especially, this isn't that bad. But again, this meat needs to be cold. If it's not hurting your hands at least a little bit, it's probably not cold enough. We're going to mix the spices in first, and then we're going to add the good stuff to it afterwards. It's another reason for that water. It's going to help us when we go to incorporate the cheese and the peppers in there. Now, i got it mixed pretty good. Go ahead and get those peppers in there next. Just for record on this, I'll just show you. We've got about a cup and probably about a half of diced up jalapeno peppers. I'm not going to try to measure it, just kind of showing you guys. We're going to incorporate these real good next. And this stuff gets really sticky when it's getting mixed up good. But you want to get those peppers mixed in real even. And the cheese we always save for last so we don't break it up too bad. All right, the high temp cheese, this is the last of a five pound bag. Got this from Butcher and Packer. Amazon sells it. You can get it at, I don't know, Bass Pro, High Mountain, I think, sells it now on their website. Now, this you're going to mix in fairly quickly, as evenly as you can without breaking up all the pieces. So, we just want to get in there and get this done. Try to get it incorporated as evenly as you can. It's about a pound of cheese to a 10 pound batch of sausage. Obviously there's no rules, you can have more or less, doesn't matter. 
your sausage, make it however you want. Now, we're just going to put this aside in the fridge, do a little basic cleanup, and get our sausage stuffer out. Here's an extra tip for you. If you're not using all of the mix or all of the cure in any of this stuff, go ahead and vacuum seal it. That'll keep it fresh and dry and keep it from caking for the next time you make sausage. There you go. All safe and dry. Now for this part, I'm going to be using my Haka 15 pound vertical stuffer. Now I'll show you something with these stuffers. I'm pretty sure all of them work this way. If you've got the silicone seal on the plunger, you have to have this installed correctly. You see how this gasket does not go over that edge here, but it does there? That's how you get meat blowing past your plunger. Make sure you got your gaskets on correctly. Now it's time to fill the stuffer. This stuff already smells fantastic. Here's a tip to avoid air pockets in your summer sausage. Starting with wet hands, get you a meatball. Don't make it too big. We want to work as much of the air out of this sausage meat as we can before we pack it down into two. Then jam it on in there pretty good. Pack it tight. The more air you get out of it now, the less holes you're going to have in your finished sausage. Now one of the really nice things about this stuffer is it's a two-speed. Haka makes this thing so you can get the shaft and the plunger up or down really fast, and then you got the lower part of the unit for really high power stuff. Now I'm going to start with these smaller casings. These will hold about a pound of meat. And just so you know, I'm using hog ring pliers and hog rings like these from Lim to close this off. You can use butcher's twine too. But honestly, I like the hog rings. I think it's a little easier than fighting the strings. And when you're packing these things, pack them tight. Don't be afraid to pack them tight. That's how you get the air out of them. These little casings are great for gifts or just to get out a little bit at a time for a party or something like that. So we're going to pack it almost all the way full, but not too full that we can't close it off. Twist them close and use our hog ring to seal her shut. There we go. And that one's ready to hang. You want to rinse these casings pretty good inside and out so they're good and pliable. This is a pretty easy process. These stuffers, grinders, things like this, these are investments. Don't buy something cheap. Buy something good. You're going to have it for a long time. The better piece of gear you buy, the less you're going to have to fight it to do what you want to do. The more enjoyable the hobby is going to be for you. And you won't have to go out and buy more expensive equipment later. I wanted to use up the rest of my small casings, but now I'm going to finish this up with a standard size 2.5 inch summer sausage casing. These casings come with most of the kits, and you're going to end up having to hand stuff the last little bit. Pretty much every stuffer is going to leave a little bit of meat in the stuffing tube. And if you have one like this, the elbow at the bottom, it's no big deal. Just hand stuff and see right now I'm at the end of the stroke. So now what I'm going to do is just pull this out of the way, take all this loose and hand stuff the rest. Basically when you're hand stuffing this, you just got to get it into a shape that will go down in there. You're going to have to be squeezing the air out and stuff like that. Basically just get it down in there, kind of squish it all together and get that air out the best you can. We're building sausages, not pianos. Alright, but what about these casings here that we didn't use? We had soaked, but we didn't use them. They're all wet, soggy. Hang them up, let them dry. When they're dry, you put them back, use them next time. Won't hurt a thing. So now we're just going to take all these sausages, going to dry our tub out a little bit, stack them in here. They're going to go in the refrigerator overnight to get happy. And tomorrow, we'll drop them in the smoker in the morning. And if you haven't figured it out yet, another tip is you clean your gear in stages as you go. So you don't have to have this big massive cleanup at the end. If you take care of it as you go, it doesn't pile up on you. You don't end up with this big a mess. And if you're like me, you have limited space to work in anyway. All right, it's the next day. We've got the chubs in the smoker smoking. I actually started this about 6 o'clock this morning. And here's a couple of tips for you. First off, if you don't have one of these wireless temperature probes, TappyQ makes an absolutely fantastic one. This hooks up to your home's Wi-Fi and check it out. You can actually monitor the temperature of your cook and the cooker if you put the probe set up that way from anywhere you want. Wi-Fi 
from your phone. That's very cool, very helpful. The next tip is run your smoker about 50 degrees higher than the meat temperature. This means you're going to have to monitor that meat temperature as you go and adjust the smoker higher as you go as well to keep it about 50 degrees hotter than the meat itself in the cooker. Now just don't go over about 200 at a max and that's if you're doing big chubs. For these little chubs I'm going to limit it to about 180. And we're going to cook these sausages. The small ones are going to be done first obviously. The big ones are going to take a little bit longer. We're going to cook them to between 152 and 155 but no more than 155. If you cook them hotter than that what happens is you render the fat and end up with a really dry crumbly nasty sausage that nobody wants to eat. Alright here's another quick tip for you. You're going to have hot spots in your cooker. On this one, the hot spots are over here where the element is. So these chubs over here on this side are going to get done first. Those two will be off in just a few minutes and I'll tell you what to do next. All right, so we're at 153 on these chubs on this side. So we're going to get these out. I'm just going to let this probe hang. Pull that out of there and it's going to leak a little bit. Now these dudes are going to be hot. So be careful. And I'll show you what to do with them next. You want to put these things straight in an ice bath of ice cold water to stop the cooking. Now all of this is for a reason. You've got to not have the fat get rendered, basically melted away. Fat is flavor and fat is moisture in these sausages. Alright, once those sausages have cooled off real good, go ahead and take them out of the ice bath and dry them off a little bit. And we're going to hang these up to bloom. What that is, is it just basically lets the sausages dry out the rest of the way. Let's those flavors start melding together a little bit. And that is a big important step. Do not skip the bloom step. All right, now it's the moment of truth. So next morning, we're gonna go ahead and cut one of these, see how they look. Man, look at there. That looks freaking awesome. Good and moist. Let's try a slice. Peel that casing off. Look at how nice and moist that looks. I'm telling you, you gotta make this yourself at home. Mm. This is fantastic. As usual, links to everything used in this video will be in the description below. Don't skip any of these steps or any of these tips are gonna help you make perfect summer sausage at home every time. Papa Greco's is also a great mix for you guys to use. Experiment with it. Recipes are kinda like guidelines anyway. You can add extra cheese, different cheese, different peppers, whatever you like. Leave me a comment below and let me know how you make your summer sausage, if you guys do, or what you're planning to do on your first project. If you have questions, ask them also in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer all of them. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down there and give me that thumbs up like button. We'll see you next time. Jam it in there. Whoops. Not like that. Gabe agrees, don't you Gabe?